Hi, welcome everyone. Hi, a very good evening everyone. Welcome to today's consumer seminar. My name is Eugene Tan and with me today we have Mr. Raymond Koo. Okay, today's consumer topic will be about the interest hike, inflation and the market direction. Our main speaker of today is Mr. Raymond Koo from the head of residential projects department. I think Mr. Raymond Koo has been in the market for more than 30 years. Among his 30 years in the industry, he has more knowledge than anyone else here with us today. So before we begin, uh, before we allow Mr. Raymond in, why not we just show you a very short video by our uh, boss of Orange Tea and Thai. Looking to own your next dream home and get better returns on your money? Property investment has proven to be a good hedge against inflation in today's volatile market. However, choosing the right buy may not be as easy. Some of the many factors to consider include location of the property, who the developer is, and if there's any upside potential. Hi, I'm Stephen Tan, CEO of Orange Tea and Thai. Today, I would like to tell you more about Lentor Modern. Lentor Modern will be an iconic integrated development at Lentor Central. As the only land plot with a 3.5 plot ratio, it will definitely stand head and shoulders above other upcoming launches. 605 units will be built above Lentor MLT in three towers, with each tower standing 25 storey high. Full condo facilities like 50 meter and 25 meter pool, tennis court, business lounge for co-working, games and dance studio. And there are even clamping sites for you to enjoy. Seize the day in a minute with over 96,000 square feet of retail space right below the doorstep. Featuring not only a 12,000 square feet supermarket and a 10,000 square feet childcare facility, Lentor Modern will also host a wide range of F&B and retail shops to serve your daily needs. Lentor Modern is solely developed by Quaco Land a name that is synonymous with quality and excellence. Guacoland has been listed in Singapore Exchange Securities since 1978. It has established its presence in Singapore, China, Malaysia, the United Kingdom and Australia. In Singapore alone, Guacoland had developed 36 residential projects, yielding almost 11,000 apartments with their flagship integrated development Guaco Tower and the Warwick Residences standing at 290 meters. Do you know this is the tallest building in Singapore? Guacoland had started the modern series at the Martin Modern and prices have appreciated almost 30% since its completion in 2021. Despite being a 99-year leasehold development in Martin Place, the concept and quality give owners confidence that Guacoland's products have an intrinsic value that will hold strong. Another modern masterpiece is the Midtown Modern, situated at Tan Pui Lan. It is the last jigsaw puzzle piece to complete the Bugis transformation. It will definitely be an iconic building when you drive into town. As you can see, Guacoland is a name synonymous with transformation. Therefore, we are excited about Lentor Modern being the forerunner in the Lentor transformation story. Guacoland will deliver an outstanding masterpiece and you are welcome to be part of this transformation story. Leave it up with all that Lentor Modern has to offer. Contact your preferred Orange Tea and Thai agent for more information on this blockbuster launch. Well, thank you so much, Lenin. That was an introduction about Lentor Modern, one of our latest projects here. So, first of all, let's welcome Mr. Raymond Koo. Okay, you're going to start the topic today. Welcome over to you, Mr. Raymond. All right. Thank you, Eugene. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Let me uh, arrange my slides first, just for a moment. I believe it's a beautiful Wednesday. Uh, it has stopped raining today in quite rainy season. So, yes. Can you all see my slides clearly? Yes, clear. Yes. All right. So, let me start today's topic. I'm going to share with all of you about the interest rate hikes. Uh, inflation and market direction for our property market. So, uh, let me start. Just a disclaimer that uh, this presentation, of course, is prepared by myself. But of course, uh, as per usual, you have to seek your own uh, experts to before you make any decisions and definitely all the standard clause over here. Let's start. So, how is the market, you know, as Property agents, 
we are often asked this golden question. And a lot of times when we ask these golden questions, it really depends on uh, the agent's mindset and their views on the market. So before I start sharing, Eugene, how is the market in your view? I think the property market right now, but first of all, before I answer your question, I think a lot of people who are in the market right now knows that the rental demand is really way above at the moment. It's getting almost, you can say it's crazy. Rental price is getting over the roof right at this moment. So with that as a basis, okay, I don't see why the uh, transactions and the price coming down at coming down anytime soon. What do you think, Mr. Raymond? Yeah, of course, I can say that there are many ways to answer this question. And the market is like a big elephant. You know, it depends on which part of it you are touching and making sense of it. And of course, like just now you mentioned, the rental market is really hot. I can I hear uh, people saying, telling me that tenants nowadays don't need to view even because they are By the time they view, they enter into a bidding war. So that's how the market is also hot in the rental market. But more than the rental market, today let me share about the sales market as well, residential market as the main focus. All right. So the market definitely is has a lot of sentiments on the ground and headlines usually form our perceptions. The market is definitely well, what we can see facing some global headwinds like Ukraine and Russia is having this war as ongoing for more than six months with fears that it may even prolong. Because it, at, why is that fearful? Because we know it has disrupted supply chains in oil and gas and also grains. COVID situation, every other day, of course, we hear about the situation. In Singapore, we are all happy because finally we can walk in shopping malls without our mask. Uh, but at the same time, countries like China and Japan, they are still grappling with the effects and definitely they have not walked out of the woods yet. And definitely this has also caused a concern because the demand for goods from these countries has fell as well. Other than that, we see that the challenge remains for supply chains. And of course, inflation is a big word that we always see nowadays. Inflation, interest hikes, these are the common words that we see in our news today. And of course, another word, monetary tightening policy is in place to tame inflation. So how does we how do we make sense of all this that's happening around us and how does all this uh, affect the property market and affect our purchasing decision and purchasing power so let me answer the question that i posed to eugene earlier how is the property market uh, for ppi we can see that in second quarter it rose 3.5 percent quarter on quarter and overall, for six months of the year, it rose 4.2%, which means it's an upward trend. We also see that CCR, which is Central Core Region, it went up about 1.9, and RCR 6.4, and OCR is 2.1. So overall, transactions make up about 2,397 for second quarter, and first quarter about 1008 making up about 4222 for first six months of this year interesting point to note is that foreigners purchase went up about 102 percent this says this tells us that foreigners are coming in already because after this two and a half years of covid they have not been really active in our market but they are coming back so today why is this market still on the uprise uh, upward trend, I can say that we notice a few trends because buyers, number one, they want to lock in interest rates because interest rates right now are still within what they are comfortable with. Secondly, like what just now Eugene mentioned, all of our buyers and investors, they see that, wow, the rental market is supporting why property investment is still one of the best investment. It surged 6.7% in quarter two. And of course, a lot of buyers know that supply is tight. Now we have about 14 to 15,000 unsold units and less than 2,000 unsold EC units. And looking ahead because of the word inflation, there's concern that with rising land costs, rising manpower costs, it will fuel the price growth. So besides all this, 
an interesting article I noticed recently. It talks about rising rates hit prices worldwide, but Singapore market remains resilient. So, uh, Eugene, make a guess. All right. Canada and New Zealand, how much did their property market correct? Meaning fell by how much? Make a guess. You mean in Singapore or in where? In Canada and New Zealand. About Make 30%? A 30. Yeah, 3 zero. Wow, okay. It fell by 20%. Oh, close. Australia is 15%. Sweden, 10 to 15. Britain is about 5 to 10. US, about 5%. And this shows that, of course, rising interest rates has rocked their, some of their markets. But in Singapore, it grew 3.2%. Why? Why? So? Because just now we shared, because there's tax supply and of course a resilient underlying demand, which later I will dis dissect furthermore. We also know one thing, that demand is strong from our 31,000 MOP upgraders, because this year was is a, like a boomer year for a lot of MOP upgraders. So that's my introduction. I am here today to answer six questions that you may have on, on the back of your mind. As some buyers or investors, you are, must be thinking some of these questions. Number one, what is causing the interest rate hikes? Number two, how is Singapore controlling inflation? And number three, how to reduce the impact of interest rate hikes? Number four, is recession coming? And number five, what is the property market outlook? Last but not the least, what should you as a buyer or investor do? Are these questions good enough, uh, Eugene? Definitely, these are more than enough. More than enough. Huh? So hopefully I can get to uh, answer some of the questions or all the questions satisfactory and bring value to all of you within the next hour or so. Okay, so before I answer all these six questions, let me just touch on the market, the economy first. Because a lot of people, sometimes when they talk, the coffee shop talk, say, hey, the market, how, economy, how, nowadays things are challenging. Uh, government says maybe recession is coming, economy is bad. So what is the economy? How big is the economy? How do we measure the economy? Let me share with you. What is the world's economy? When you look at the whole world itself, top economies like US makes up the majority of the economy. That's why everything the US do, it rocks the market. Their, their, their GDP, we normally measure their GDP, which is a total value of goods and services that's produced by a country within a year. US produce about 21 trillion. China, 14.7, Japan, 5 trillion, Germany, 3 trillion, United Kingdom, India, France, Canada, South Korea, and of course, the golden question now is how about Singapore? Eugene, what do you think? Why is Singapore's GDP? If you ask me my take, I would think it's definitely less than trillions of dollars. Uh, my guess is close to maybe 500 billion. Yeah, you are almost there. Very good guess. It's 560 billion. Oh, nice. So, yes, you look at it. Actually, Singapore, we cannot compete with the big boys because of our small population. We are only 5.7 million uh, population. But we can compete on another sense. Let me share with you. Let's look at our GDP per capita. We can never compete by volume because of our population size, but we can measure productivity by GDP per capita, means by per person. So it actually measures the prosperity of a nation. Number 10 coming in is Denmark, which is about 58,000, Hong Kong, Brunei, United States, Norway, Switzerland, Qatar, Ireland. So where is Singapore? Is Singapore I, in this list? I think they are at least in the top 20. 
top 20. Mm. Let me tell you something. We are number two in the world. Wow, nice. Yes. And you look at this whole list, we are actually one of the Asian countries in this list. Mm. And very few Asian countries top this list. Luxembourg is number one, but because it's a small country, it's just about uh, 630,000 population in Europe that majors in private banking. So Singapore, in a way, is a very prosperous nation. This forms the background of what I'm sharing about economy, about GDP, GDP per capita. Let me go into today's sharing. What is inflation? You know, inflation, this word we see in the news like almost every other day, right? Inflation actually is the rate at which prices for goods and services rise. So inflation is not all bad because we all want some form of inflation means that economy is still on the right track but too much is bad. But what causes inflation? Three main factors. First one is called demand pool. Okay, it's demand pool, meaning the demand outstrips the supply. Just as you see in this slide, this gentleman here says bad, why? Because a mask cost 690. This was when COVID outbreak and the demand outstrips the supply. One box of masks, $138. So hopefully we never go back to that situation again. Lucky, lucky thing is that we don't have to buy any more masks at the moment. <laughs> you still need, la, you still need when you go to medical places. Yeah, hopefully you know. I don't have to visit the places. <laughs> and you take MRT, you need to wear your mask. <laughs> uh, I use disposable mask. I mean non-disposable mask. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So second factor that causes inflation is cost push. Like for example, we see now Ukraine uh, having a green situation production cost goes up, prices will go up. And the third factor is built in, meaning with all this happening, workers now expect their wages to go up as well to maintain their cost of living. So coming to my sixth question, the first one, what caused the interest hikes? The central bank influenced the commercial banks. Who is a central bank? In Singapore is MAS, the United States is Federal Reserve. So central banks, they influence them. How do they influence them? Because when commercial banks, they have excess funds, they deposit with central bank. When they deposit with central bank, they earn interest rates. So for them as commercial bank to lend it out, they must make it worthwhile to lend it out, meaning they will charge a bit higher. If not, they would have deposited the money with the central bank. Mm. So how does the central bank come and play their role? Central bank... Inflation because inflation is the rate at which, well, as long as we talk about it, how prices increase over time. Main thing, the target for them is to keep inflation at 2 to 3%. Because it's not all bad, because we want our wages to go up, we want our economy to continue growing, but at a controlled rate. So how does rising rates control, rise, raising the interest rate control inflation. See, when people have to pay more for loans, they have lesser money to buy other things. So lower spending power equals lower prices. But it's not as straightforward because it doesn't mean that the moment you increase interest rate today, tomorrow inflation comes down. It's a very slippery situation that um, the, the FOMC have to, have to manage, America's have to manage. Because if they raise too fast, what happens? Companies may borrow less and create lesser jobs, end up, it may be recession. And there's something that we do not want. And even worse, may lead to depression as well. Depression, yes. yes. <laughs> okay, so why we need to control? Because to prevent depression, that's what Eugene say. Hmm. At the same time, we don't want inflation to be too fast and furious because it affects our purchasing power. When it's out of control, we will have hyperinflation or stagflation. Sorry, Ayuji, I mute you first because a bit your background noise. Hyperinflation is fast rising inflation. Just like Germany in 1946, prices double every 15 hours. It was because of the war, a post-war situation. And stagflation is where 
severe inflation is something very tricky, plus slow economic growth and high unemployment rate. It is the most difficult to manage. It only happened in USA in 1970s when there was a high budget deficit, low interest rate at that time, and at the same time, oil embargo happened and the collapse of many uh, managed currency rates. So it's something that they will definitely want to avoid. And of course, the third situation is like what just now Eugene said, depression or deflation or recession. It is a decrease for prices for various reasons because of supply outpaces demand. It was happened in the Great Depression in 1930s. So I settled first question. We lay the ground. What caused the interest hikes to control interest rates and to control inflation? All right. Number two, how does Singapore control inflation? How does Singapore control inflation? Of course, Inflation has also hit us. We are not immune. Today, I only say that it's the highest level since 2008, which is about 14 years. And prices is expected to continue to rise within the next few months. Inflation expected to peak in quarter four. But of course, it's led by transport and accommodation causes. We all know uh, nowadays COE is more than six digits to buy on piece of paper. But of course, it's expected to peak in quarter four of this year. However, one upward boost is from GST. The next year, January 2023, one more percent is going to be added to our GST rates. So, of course, though inflation is going to likely to come down, but end of the day, we know that there's manpower costs, everything is coming in. Unlikely, it will cost double digit. But main thing we also have to note, actually, our site is still very manageable. You look at this article, if you see the fine print, uh, the small little print, Eugene, can see it not? Can you see the... the... It's a bit small for me. A bit small for you, ah? Uh? Mm. Turkey. Okay, mm. you cannot see, uh, so I ask you, you make a guess, Turkey, what is the inflation rates? Oh, I think way above 80%, am I correct? 80, yeah. Uh. Uh almost there, 79.6%. Mm. Argentina hit 71% and Russia is 15%. So in our site, now we're we'll seeing about 7% and core inflation about 4.8%. So interesting point, uh, how does Singapore control inflation? I, I was watching the NDR, National Day Rally, and I like what PM Lee said so well within a nutshell. Let me just share with you. He says the basic reality is that the international economic conditions has changed, not just because of the pandemic or not just because of the war in Ukraine, but really the recent decades of globalization, it was in full swing. International trade was very rapid. China economy was growing very fast. Exporting was happening and very competitive prices. So it has really brought down the cost of goods production and cost the worldwide causes to be very stable. But he says one thing, this era is over because China's growth and export is slowing down. Their cost is also going up. So the era of a lot of trading and cost is low has gone past. Some countries, they raise tariff against each other. That's like US and China. So countries are relooking the way that they do business. They are looking at prioritizing resilience and self-sufficiency, meaning they want to make sure they have enough for their own people first before they start doing business with other countries. So this means what? They are not just buy, people are not just buying from the cheapest source. It has come to a place where countries have to accept higher costs. So companies nowadays are not opting for just in case but they are opting for instead just in time production. All this has caused costs to go up, inflation to go up, including Singapore and especially Singapore because we import mostly everything that we need. So though it has went up, global economy have changed, like what I mentioned just now, end of low pricing and openness to trade. But Singapore, I can say we still manage it quite well. Our government is very wise. 
is uh, happening everywhere, inflation and, and living costs. To dampen it, our MAS has strengthened our Singapore dollar four times in the last few months. This is to cool or rather to dampen inflation. But there is a limit of what, how much they can do because the moment they strengthen our dollars, it makes our export look expensive and definitely makes our export less competitive. So what is, where is the silver lining in this story? Means what? Means definitely uh, inflation is here to stay. Cost is going to go up for a while because the global economic situation has changed. But the good news is that although interest rate is raised to tame inflation and Singapore don't just use that one way to tame inflation. Next thing is to note that our interest rates is not raised in tandem with US, right? Because our Singapore dollar is strong, we don't need to raise every time USA raised it. I found out from a banker recently that for the past year or so, when USA increased their interest rate 11 times, Singapore only increased about four times. So today, our interest rates is about two over percent and fix come touching about 3%. Make a guess, okay, Eugene, come make a guess. Argentina, how much is their interest rates? It's the highest in the world, highest. Yeah, I, I think I've read that article somewhere. If, if you want to make a guess, my guess would be their interest, their borrowing interest rate would be maybe 20%. 20, yeah. Yeah. Final answer. Maybe we bump it up a little bit to 25. Their interest rate is 45%. Oh, goodness. Goodness, right? Today, when I was sharing this with my colleague, my friend says, wow, 20, uh, 45%. I might as well don't need to borrow from the bank. Let me lend you. Mm. <laughs> So in Argentina is 45%, Ghana is 25% and Venezuela also 25%. This gives you perspective that actually what we have is one of the lowest in the world. So of course, let's look at some historical data, look at our market, look at some trends to make sense of things. You see, when you look at the gray line here, it shows the interest rates over time from 2008 to where we are today. The blue bars here, shows the sales volume. So transaction volume was actually low only when during Lehman Brothers crisis, during when introduction of TDSR during the 2013, and also during the COVID-19 outbreak. So in actual fact, it doesn't have a like really a close relation with interest rates, but rather most of the time volume drops when you went through a crisis. And at the same time, what can we conclude? There is no correlation between interest rates and volume. Well, why? Because Singapore market, we have the TDSR framework to keep our investors and buyers prepared for higher rates. So even when interest rate goes up, people don't need to panic sell. People don't need to let go of their property because we have a framework in place. On top of that, you know, why we buyers still want to buy now? Because they believe looking forward, interest rate is going to go up. It may be a good time to enter the market before it goes up further. So besides that, we always hear this saying, property is a good hedge against inflation. How good is it? Let's not just talk about a, a, a cliche, this good hedge against inflation. Let's look at some numbers because numbers never lie. Look at this graph over here. It shows that how HDB resale price have risen through the last 10 years, about 16.7%. Condominiums has went up about 48.3%. So how about inflation? Inflation for the last 10 years went up about 12.5%. So definitely it tells you a story. It tells you that to buy a property, it helps to hedge against inflation. So today, this year, we're hitting 7%. I can say manpower costs, material costs, land costs is definitely going to go up. So property, I believe, still one of the best asset class. So I covered two questions so fast. So far, so good. Eugene, yeah. I'm going too fast. Good? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Good pace. I covered what cost interest hikes. Well, how does Singapore control our inflation? Let's go into number three, more interesting one, more practical one. 
how to reduce the impact of interest hikes. I'm going to share with you four ways to control interest hikes or rather to mitigate the impact. So number one, repricing or refinancing. Repricing basically means today you are with, for example, DBS Bank and you go to your same banker and say, hey, my interest rate is so high right now. I like a new package. Yeah, I'd like to stay with you. So it's repricing your current package. Refinancing means you are with this bank, but however you feel that it's not giving me the best rates, I'm going to jump to another bank. That is called refinancing. So banks usually has three kinds of rates, bought rate, SORA, which is a floating rate, and fixed rates. Bought rate is not transparent. Most of the time, people don't talk about it because the banks manage it on their own. Most of the time, people look at SORA, which is the floating rate, or the fixed rate. So which one to choose? It's really up to you because each has its own strength and weaknesses. Basically, people choose floating rates is because you believe that rates will come down and you don't mind the volatility. Okay. Take note, when you buy building under construction, new launches, the banks only offer you floating rates. Right? For fixed rates, people believe that they want some stability. They don't want uh, every now and then they have to check their rates. They just like to have peace of mind to keep it fixed. It's of course advantageous if you foresee that the rates is going to go up. All right? So it's totally up to your personal choice which one you like. So another key point to note before I go into the other three ways to reduce the impact, I like to share that it may sound scary because whenever we see the news, um, USA is going to go up 75 bit points and you, you, you get into a panic mode. Let me share with you something that when rates go up, it doesn't mean that installment goes up in proportion. What do I mean? Let's say a monthly installment based on $1 million and let's say you used to enjoy 1.5% and you are taking a 29 years loan, your monthly installment will be about 3,005. The moment when you hit 3%, it will only go up by about $800 or $700 or so. So this tells us what? Doubling of rates is not doubling of installments. So don't go into a panic mode whenever you hear that, wow, rates is going to high up and, and property investment is going to, going to lose its is cut is attractiveness i'm not going to go into property market no 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 take a break have a look at the numbers really analyze things all right number two how to mitigate the impact of interest rate hikes make partial repayment so the beautiful thing is when you have a housing loan and if you have let's say excess money on your own you can talk to a banker and say i'd like to make a partial repayment and when you make a partial repayment, let's say you make a $80,000 repayment, this $80,000 goes to clear your principal sum entirely. It doesn't break into interest or principal. Not like when you're making installment payments, definitely there is apportionment. You get me so far? Yes? So for example, let me state an example, like you have outstanding loan, about $800,000 over 25 years at 2.2%. If you make a $40,000 repayment in a lump sum, you will save yourself about close to $200 in terms of monthly installment. On top of that, you save an interest of about $13,000 over time. And if you make $80,000, so on and so forth, your interest, your monthly repayment drops by about $400 and you save about $27,000. Overall, it definitely helps you to save and mitigate the factor. Okay, number three, to mitigate the interest heights, probably you can consider extending your loan tenure. All right, so for example, you have a $750,000 uh, loan amount. You can extend your loan tenure, if you can, from 25 years to 35 years maximum. Instantly, your installment drops from 3,000 to to 2005, helping you to save $600, or rather pay less $690 per month. Of course, I would always say if this helps you, how you can work out is that when you have more savings, then you make a partial repayment, 
it helps you to cut down the repayment eventually right last one is something interesting which a lot of people never heard of is what they call interest offset package okay this is beneficial for business owners a lot of business owners they like to keep liquidity on their hands because they need the cash flow to do business so some banks like hsbc or standard charter they have this kind of interest offset package for example hsbc call it the smart mortgage so what do they do you it is applicable as a sora package whatever you have in your current account for example you have a million dollars in your current account 70 percent of that seven hundred thousand, they will use it to offset your housing loan so let's say you have a million dollars in your bank you have a million dollars in your housing loan they will calculate that the 700k 70 percent of it they will not charge you for your housing loan for your 700,000. only the balance they charge you interest rates so mainly is to give you the liberty of cash flow you don't need to lock in your money in your property but if you take money out how do they count it at every month end they will take the amount and time 70 percent Maximum cap is the loan amount, and of course, you can use it for BUC, the building under construction, or completed properties. All right, so far so good. Very good. All right, so let's go on to question number four, the hot question. Are we in recession? It's a question that people may be debating about. Uh, rule of thumb, I can say that a recession is consecutive two quarters of negative GDP of a country's GDP. There's an ongoing debate that whether USA is in a recession right now or not. If you look at really their numbers, they are in theory in recession, right? Because they have two quarters of negative GDP. But last quarter, in quarter two, was only negative 0.9. Though it is in decline for two quarters yet in usa right now they are seeing a massive job growth massive job growth of 528,000 jobs per month meaning employment is up since 1969 right now they are seeing the lowest unemployment rate of 3.5 percent only so mber their national bureau of economic research they measure a country their usa side whether is it in recession or not and to them they deem that it's only significant if there is a significant decline in these five indicators economic activity real income employment industrial output at the same time retail sales so to answer the hot question the chief of federal reserve mr jerome powell I like to quote him, he says it very clearly. He says, I do not think that US is currently in recession. The reason, because there are too many areas of the economy that is performing well. This is a very strong labor market that it doesn't make sense if economy is in recession or this kind of things is happening. He says that central bank will watch the situation very closely to determine the further moves. So end of the day, although they're increasing interest rates, they do not want to a situation where it slips into recession. So they are watching all indicators, making sure that economy on the whole still do well. How about Singapore? More importantly, Singapore, right? Singapore, our side MTI cuts our GDP growth this year to 3.3 to 4%. At the May day, our PM Lee says that inflation will remain high. Central banks in developed countries Definitely, they are tightening their monetary policies, raising their interest rates, and global growth will be weaker. Economy, we all see year on year, just grew about 4.4 because last year was uh, COVID year. And quarter on quarter, actually, we contracted 0.2. Although demand in certain sectors are, have went down, but what is the good news? The good news is that some sectors are going up. Are mitigating because for example travel is opening up the borders are opening up and people are spending money people are coming out to retail is doing well so although of course there are still risks around but 
our economy is really growing again. Recession, according to our site, they say MAS says is quite unlikely in the next two years. Okay, but actually we don't need to be overly worried because end of the day, recession is just like a part of economic cycle. It doesn't mean that something must be very, very wrong. And usually nowadays, economies recover within one to two years. It goes back to the usual upward trend, right? As you can see over here, FMB is on the way up, retail, so on and so forth. So you may ask me, Raymond, what if I am not so optimistic? I still want to adopt a negative view. Can or not? Can, definitely can. You know, there are some of us who are more uh, realistic or a, a bit pessimistic. But we look at history itself. See, even when recessions happen in USA, the several events that happen from subprime all the way to Great Depression, one thing we notice, the amount of time, the recession period is shortening. Why? Because nowadays, government are more responsive. Government are more responsive with stimulus. In Singapore, we are very fortunate. We have really strong reserves to tap on. How about Singapore? Singapore side, of course, we also see overall, uh, normally when we go through crisis, we take quite fast to recover. That's why when COVID-19 hits us, we are one of the countries that rebounded really fast. You know, even if you, let's say you are in a recession mood, let me share with you one way to get out of it. Eugene, you want to know how to get out of recession mode? Yes, definitely. You are. <laughs> you can, this weekend, make a trip to Orchard Ion. You know why I go to Orchard Ion? Why? Because when you go to Orchard Ion, you will see that Louis Vuitton need to queue to get in. You, you are absolutely queue. right. Uh, you need to queue to get into Katia. Mm. And you go to Hourglass, we want to buy a nice watch. How long must you wait? Oh, there, yeah, I, I understand this. I was just there last week. The salesperson told me I have to wait for at least one year. One year? Uh, another salesperson tell me two years. So <laughs> probably you are the VIP or uh, not. <laughs> so when you are in Orchard Ion, take a breath of the recession air. You know, have a brief there and feel a bit more optimistic. So... Coming to question number five, is that what is the property market outlook? The golden question, right? So before I look at the future, talk about the future, let's look a bit at the past. How does the market perform since 1994 till where we are? Because when we look at the past, we can make sense of how we arrived where today. Look at it, if I, if I track the top and bottom of the graph, it shows that over time, property price goes up. That's why we said just now, it's an excellent hedge against inflation. The market definitely went through a few several rounds of uh, of crisis like Asia economic crisis, SARS.com, subprime, and of course also the cooling measures TDSR was introduced in 2013, and of course we also came across COVID-19 that went hit us in December 19. What is the interesting thing here? I show you this graph with the arrows indicated there. When the market corrects, let's say when it was in the SARS period, 20%, it rebounds 50%. When it corrects 30%, it rebounds 60%. When it corrects 15%, it rebounded 40% and now still on an upward trend. So this tells you one thing, when it goes down, it comes back up even stronger. So you may be asking me, Raymond, so what's next? When is the correction coming? I would say our market is very strong. Why? Because of the many rounds of cooling measure. As you can see, all this cooling measure has made sure that even if crisis hit us like COVID-19, a worldwide economic uh, situation, the market still holds the, the property price very well. So how can it correct? Or rather, will it correct? I can say the only way is that our government come in and make sure it is a sustainable growth. They would want property price to grow in the long run, but at a sustainable rate. So one way that I probably can say is that probably most likely 
they will relook at the TDSR framework. Instead of 3.5% interest rates to qualify for the, uh, in a way to calculate your maximum loan, they may increase it to 4% or 4.5% to make sure that you can well uh, pay your loans even when higher rates hit. So that, what would that do? That would affect your maximum uh, loan from 1.225, may affect you to 1.085. From 1.96, if your household income is 16,000, from 1.96 to 1.737. This is uh, in terms of numbers, how it may affect. Let's look at overall, how did the market perform for the last few years in terms of numbers. So supply side, we can see that it peaked somewhere in 2018. 19 when there was a lot of on block remember when on block cycle hits us a lot of mega projects was launched supply was very high at 36,000 and there were a lot of talks and analysts saying that oh Singapore property market the uh, is not is prices is going to come down because supply demand but instead of coming down what happens the demand was very strong now today is less than about 14,000 and it is tells us averagely each year, each year, if you work it out, the consumption is about four, is about 10,000 per year, which is very strong, I would say. And if you look at the on block, interesting point here, the on block market has been really muted over the last four years. The on block cycle, you see the on block deals, of course, that's how we shared 2018, there was a bumper year. 39 deals at 11.5 B, flowing that is only 5, 4, 5, 6, and the amount is not really staggering. Why does on block cycles is so important? Why don't I talk about on block cycles? Because it not just caused the market to go on another level, because the sellers who sold to developers will turn to buyers. And usually, as you know, they reinvest their fortune back into the market. So my point is. Don't wait for another on block cycle to hit us, then you start buying. Next, look at the GRS, our government land sales. Look at the past few years, from 2018 to where we are today. The supply has not been going up a lot. Just now I shared, each year, about 10,000 consumption, but yet each year, they are pushing up about four to 3,000 units. And yet the primary sales has been going up and this year, up to August, we are hitting almost 5,000 units already. What about coming up? What are the launches that's ahead of us? Over here, I have 12 plots for you that's going to be launched in the coming months. If you really add up close to about 6,000 units, one key point to note is that land cost has come to a point above, most of them, above 1,002 to 1,003 mark. ECs has crossed the 650 mark and going ahead, I believe, with more developers selling out their inventory, definitely land cost has only one way to go. That is hard, that is up. So more than just looking at the supply side, let's look at the demand side. Demand has been really strong. More million dollar HDB has been transacted. Um, and of course, we also see another key thing is that income growth is very strong. For the four room and five room HDB dwellers, they have grown in their income from 33% to 27%. And the percentage of household income above 15,000 has grown since 2000 to where we are today. More than 21% of Singaporean households have more than $15,000 income. That is pretty good, right? On top of that, foreign demand is strong. Why? Because the COVID situation has caused high net worth people to look at Singapore as a very attractive place to live in. We can see that, that we are one of the top 10 inflow nations in the world. 2,800 high net worth individuals are coming in. That's why we see, you know, headlines like this, like property investment surge 89%. There's strong confidence in Singapore market and uh, China national snaps up 20 units paying ABSD at Canning Hill Pierce. So with all this news in mind, all these happenings, all these numbers in mind, what should an investors do? 
So before I go into this question, let me let me ask Eugene a simple question. Okay, Eugene, let's 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 take it like you are a buyer or you are owner. Today you bought a 1.5 million dollar property. Hmm. All right, let's say market is on an upward trend. Three years time, what do you expect to sell your property at? At least I would say 1.9 to 2 million dollars. Wow, 1.9 to 2 million dollars. That's almost like a uh, almost 25% increase. Yep. Mm -hmm. 8% per year. Okay. Yep. So let's take the other side of the coin. Let's say mm -hmm. market is taking a correction, taking a hit. Mm -hmm. Let's say from 1.5 right now, it's not worth 1.5 anymore. It goes down to 1.3. Would you sell it? If you ask me honestly, I wouldn't sell. I would rather hold. Why will you hold it? Because end of the day, if I rent, if I choose to rent out the property, right, I still can have passive income coming in. Someone else is paying the installment for me. Okay. So mm -hmm. even if let's say you are staying inside the house, eh, you are not renting out, will you sell? Definitely not. Because at the end of the day, I still need a place to stay. I cannot be staying at the bridge, where, where the, uh, underneath a bridge. Am I correct? Yeah. So why am I asking you this question? Because mm -hmm. I want to share something which is a common uh, way which we think. You know, behavioral economics tells us how people behave in the real world. Okay, what do I mean here? When market is good, we all face with the endowment effect, meaning we value things higher than its market value. Today, probably you tell me you want to sell 1.92 million, but they may even be sellers that tell me they want to sell 2.1, 2.2 million, isn't it? Because by the virtue that they own it, they will price it higher than what they are willing to pay for it. But on the other hand, when market goes down, there is something called the disposition effect, meaning they will choose to wait because they believe that the value will come up. And just like this illustration here, if we have stock A or stock B, stock A price goes up, stock B price comes down. Most buyers, most investors, instead of selling stock A, Instead of selling stock B, which is going down, they will sell stock A because they will hold on to stock B, believing that it will go back up. Mm. Make sense? Yes. Yes, ah. Uh. So, how to? How well, do I ask you to consider some, 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 some things to do in this today's market? One way is, I urge you to consider new launches. Why? Because new launches are not a lump sum payment you don't get the full impact of the installment hike. It's under progressive payment and the impact is very minimum. Based on this illustration here, let's say you buy a $1.5 million property, you take a $1.125 million loan, you look at the numbers, If even if interest rate goes up from 1.5 to 2.2%, under the progressive framework, when foundation is done, you are just paying $26 more per month. And by the time TOP, you are only paying $300 more. So the impact of interest rate hikes is not going to hit you very much. And as an investor, it makes sense. By the time TOP, if market is, is good, you can, you can sell for profit, which a lot of times first mover advantage because developers usually price their property up as it closes to TOP. Next thing you should consider, of course, take a look and always uh, track the rental market. If the rental market is healthy or not, Singapore rental market has been on a high. And of course, we see very high occupancy rate of more than 94%. And this is, of course, there's a strong demand for rental property. And looking at overall market, some analysts is saying that the continual interest hikes is not tenable, meaning potentially they will, economists expect the federal to start cutting rates late next year. Of course, it's not going to be something that in the long run, you keep doing it, it will hit the market. Mm -hmm. So in summary, what should you do? I leave, we, we leave you with a few questions. Number one, are you over leveraging? Which I don't think so because most of the time, we have the TDSR framework, the MES framework in, my, in, in check of you. Secondly, should you panic if there should be a correction? No. Why? 
because prices will go back up again. Number three, ask yourself, will you be badly hit if there's a framework change? If yes, maybe you should enter the market before there's any major changes to the framework. And of course, I always advise our customers, adopt a long-term outlook because it's definitely better to own than to rent. It's definitely better to invest than not to be investing. Let your money work harder for you and not to work hard for money. So what should you do? Overall, I can say our in-house research has seen the price and of course see the trend. They are still expecting the price growth to be between 6 to 8% this year. In terms of, uh, in terms of volume, it's still expected between 9 to 10,000 units this year. So in conclusion, I've covered quite a bit on these six questions that I believe you should have a better idea now about the market that we know interest rate hikes is to tame inflation. Overall, we know that global situation has changed. As our government endeavors to tame inflation, we, we, we know that property is still one of the best asset class to hedge against inflation. I also shared about four ways how to reduce the impact of interest hikes. Though economy is facing headwinds, but some economies is still recovering from COVID and the economy is still opening up and growing. So I would say in summary, property market is robust. The supply looks tight. So I believe there's still lots of opportunity that you should look at. Do speak to your preferred Orange Tea agent for more personalized advice. Happy house hunting for everyone. So I'd like to hand over the time now to Eugene because Eugene has a good uh, low bang to share with you. <laughs> Eugene, over to you. Thank you so much, Raymond. Okay, maybe just let me start sharing. Just give me a minute. Let me set up my slides. So of course, if you have any questions, feel free to type in the Q&A and later after Eugene's quick sharing, then both of us will take the questions and try to answer your questions as best as we know how. Okay, over to you. Okay, thank you, Raymond. Okay, you can see my slides. Okay, thank you so much. Well, first of all, that was a very insightful take on interest rate and inflation. In actual fact, there are thousand and one way to invest your money. However, in Singapore, I feel the best investment are still in the real estate. Let's put capital gains aside. Try renting out your gold bars or your stocks and shares. Because end of the day, real estate still is still a core need. You still need a roof over your head. Am I correct? So today, I'm about to show you this particular project called Lantor Modern, a start of an entire new township. The only integrated mixed use de development in Lantor Central, developed by Guacoland. I'm pretty sure some of you have already seen Mr. Stephen Tan, our CEO, share with you a very short video clip. However, I'm going to dive into more details with that. Okay. So first of all, before we begin, let me just get some definition correct. What exactly is an integrated development? An integrated development consists of three components, namely, of course, the residential component, followed by the commercial, retail or hospitality. Last but not least, the transportation node. Having all these three together definitely creates a lot of synergy. Integrated developments are actually considered very rare in Singapore. As you can see, we have only about 20 of this project in the month of all those thousands condominium projects, right? Let's zoom in closer. Let's take a look at the top few first, okay? We have number four on the list, which is called Passeries 8. Passeries 8 actually did very well. They sold up to 85% unit during launch day, and they have achieved a price of more than 2,000 PSF in that particular district in Passeries. Okay, next we have uh, Canning Hill Pierce. Just now, Raymond also mentioned already, okay? Canning Hill Pierce during launch day, it actually broke a record of 1.18 billion in terms of total sales. It's just one weekend. Imagine the amount of money flowing into real estate. Okay. Number two on the list, okay, uh, launched not too long ago, okay, is called Piccadilly Grand. Piccadilly Grand have also achieved an astounding sales 
close to 80% units launched during that day as well. As you can tell from the sheer results, the demand for integrated development is really very strong. Next, so what exactly is the hype about Lantor Modern? Okay, first of all, we have more than 96,000 square feet of commercial space. That works out to be a staggering 51 shops. Now imagine this, having a restaurant, fast food outlets, nice cafe, bakery, barber tea, beauty salon, tuition center, clinics, or even bank, just less than one minute of your home. On top of everything I've just mentioned, not forgetting, we still have a whopping 12,000 square feet of supermarket and a 10,000 square feet of childcare center. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is really the pinnacle of convenience. Recently, there's a project called Sky Eden at Budok. To put things into perspective, okay, the commercial component of Sky Eden works out to be around 11,000 square feet. That works out to be around 12 shops only. So if you do a little bit of comparison, we are 51 compared to the others where they have only about 12, close to six times as much. A very important point to note here, some of you might say, hey, Eugene, what if, okay, just what if after Lantor Modern complete, most of the shops become made agency, money lender, or even handphone shop. We does see this happening in other condom medium project. Am I right? So for this, I can guarantee you that it won't happen in Lantor Modern because none of the shops in Lantor Modern are for sale. It will be managed and controlled by Guaco Land. This means to say that the tenants mix is actually a very carefully selected, okay, to serve the residents and the community itself. Just like Guaco Tower in CBD, where Wallage Residences is. So this brings me to the next point, the developer. No need for much introduction, okay. Guaco Land is one of the biggest and also the award-winning developer listed on the Singapore Exchange all the way back in the 1978. Especially so, when it comes to integrated development, Waco Land definitely leads the way. They have a stellar track record, not only in Singapore, if they will have in Malaysia, China, and all over the world as well. Some, uh, some of the projects are even stretched all the way to London. So for me today, I will just pick a few just to do the showcase. Number one, we have the world famous Wallage Residences, which in actual fact, it's also Singapore's tallest residential project, the clowning glory of Waco, smack in the middle of CBD. Okay, next I have the Midtown Modern. This is a part of Guaco Mega Development, uh, full facilities condominium linked directly to the Bugis, uh, Bugis MRT interchange. Once Midtown Modern is complete, it will close the missing gap between Suntec City and Bugis. Okay, next will be Martin Modern, fronting the River Valley close. The Martin uh, place actually is developed uh, in a highly coveted lifestyle enclave of Robinson Key. Next would be uh, Lantor Modern. As of now, Guaco Land is bringing the modern series into Lantor. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, in this picture, you can see this is Lantor Modern. The magnificent masterpiece stands 25 story tall. Three towers consist of 605 units sitting right above the Lantor MRT. As for layout, we have one bedroom to four bedroom. The lowest floor. The lowest residential floor will start at level four. These are where the main facilities are. The unique part about Lantor Modern is my two, three, and four bedroom units all comes with Flexi. Okay. Have you heard about Flexi before, Raymond? Yes. Okay. In actual fact, Flexi is something very useful. But what exactly is Flexi? It's actually a very usable space where it can double up as a study area an extended wardrobe or even into what I call a man cave. So this is something very well planned. Okay. It can be even for if you require can also be converted into a small bedroom. Why do I say this? It is because the best thing about Lantor Modern Flexi is that all my Flexi come with its own aircon unit and a full length window. I will urge you ladies and gentlemen to come down to the show flat to experience how useful our Flexi is. Okay, so this is an animation video done by the developer. It shows you how Lantor Modern will look once it is complete. In this video, you can see that the Lantor Modern itself is actually strategically designed in a manner where no units are deprived of a premium facing. 
unlike a lot of other condominium projects where you have a tower smack in front of the other, okay, in Lantau Modern, you won't find balcony to balcony view. There's two very important facing here in Lantau Modern. Number one, the 180s unblocked uh, landed enclave view and of course the Hillock Park view. Very interesting fact, this is a drone shot taken from approximately level 14. In each tower, they, are, they have their own sky terraces, okay? It is also located at level 14. This is for the residents to enjoy quiet ambience, or solo working or small group interaction. The, on the level 14, there is also a viewing deck for the residents to enjoy the surrounding natural reserve. For those who are fancy to get a, even a better view, this particular picture shows a drone shot taken at roughly 25 stories. In this picture, you can clearly see the lower delta reservoir. This is what I say a true million dollar view. As I mentioned before, okay, Lantau Modern is connected to the Lantau MRT station. This is actually served by the Thomson East Coast Line, one of the most important MRT lines in Singapore. Once this line is completed, it will connect up to eight, ladies and gentlemen, eight MRT interchange station. It stretches all the way from Woodlands all the way to the East Coast. As of now, okay, this is only a stage three completion. You can now access Woodlands to Orchard all the way to Gardens by the Bay. In the future, amazingly, for those who want to venture into Johor Bahru, you can even take the train all the way to Johor Bahru as well. Uh, the other point to note is that for those who are driving in Lantau Modern, okay, we are actually very cl clear nearby to SLE, TP, and CTE. And of course, not forgetting the latest, the North South Corridor, we actually greatly reduce the car traveling time to the city. By the way, in Lantau Modern, as, as a lot of you would know, those uh, condominium which is very close to MRT, the developer does not give up to 100% parking spaces, correct? Um, because what I know is that uh, Raymond itself is staying in Pudo. Okay, that particular that particular piece of uh, complement projects doesn't give you hundred percent. But however, in Lantau Modern, the developer is giving you up to ninety percent parking spaces in Lantau Modern, which I feel is really more than sufficient. There's a Chinese term saying "xian fa you si," also known as the first mover advantage. I just now, Mr. Raymond, have also mentioned a little bit to you. However, some of you might have heard this first mover advantage in real estate. Let me truly show you what first mover advantage in Lantau Modern is. For this, I will need to show you the URA master plan. Okay, At the start of my presentation, I've mentioned to you Lantau Modern is the one and only integrated mixed use plot in this location. Okay, This means to say that the plot is connected directly to the MRT with commercial components. In this picture here, you can see there are a total of 11 plots crafted up by URA. With Lantau Modern being the first, this will set the new benchmark here as well. Okay, interesting fact is that Lantau Modern is sitting on the land which their plot ratio is one of the highest at 3.5. Okay, with this, just let me zoom in even closer to the new government land sale site. This will give you some good insight of the potential of the land tour transformation. I'm sure you will want to be the first to take advantage of this. There are two sites highlighted in red. Plot number one, okay, this is where land tour modern is. The preview will start 2nd of September, just in another few days time. Plot number two, land tour hill road parcel A. This was awarded in January. Surprising fact is that this particular uh, winner of the plot is actually belongs to the same developer, Guaco Land together with Hong Leong. So ladies and gentlemen, does it tell you something about the potential here? And if possible, I'm pretty sure the same developer will want to monopolize the entire site here. Okay, The tender will close 13 September on two more plots of land, plot number three and plot number four. Can you make a guess how aggressive and how high the land sale will be? Plot number five will be releasing in this year, October. Plot number six already under reserve. This is actually a very rare occurrence where SLA in such a short time span released so many land. This shows that the government is really pushing for the land transformation. So 
Thank you for your attention so far. Let me just do a very quick recap. Okay, number one, Wakoland, the renowned developer, a leader in integrated mixed use development. Number two, the only project that is directly connected to Lantor MRT station served by the Thomson East Coast Line. Number three, the huge mall, supermarket, childcare center. This will provide absolute convenience to the residents. Last but not least, number four, the first mover advantage. If you are sitting, if you are, you are already sitting in the games where you wait for the rest of the plots to just move up, ladies and gentlemen, this is really called the, the first mover advantage. Lantor Modern is truly once in a generation opportunity to get for you to get into the transformation of Lantor Township. Okay, this is something very fresh. I just added the slides about a few hours ago when uh, Raymond was doing his presentation. This was published on the Straits Times just about two, three hours ago only. It shows that the Lantor Modern unit prices will start from as low as $1,888. Let me remind you, 1880 PSF is really a very good buy. With that, if you compare directly, not too long ago, there is this new launch called Amo Residences at Amokyo. The PSF there actually transacted much higher than $2,000 without an MRT station nearby as well. Okay. With that, I've come to the end of my presentation. Okay, by the way, I've merely touched on the tip of the iceberg of what Lantor Modern can provide. Please make an appointment with an Orange Tea agent to guarantee you a viewing slot for the show flat this coming weekend. Thank you so much, Raymond. Uh, over to you. Thank you, Eugene. Thank you for your very detailed sharing within such a short time of 10 minutes. <laughs> Thank you. It has uh, helped our uh, buyers to have a quick overview. But more importantly, do drop by our show flat this coming Friday onwards, two o'clock, you can make appointment. And we definitely look forward to see all of you there. Uh, one more key point to note is that the MRT station is underground. So mm. it's fantastic because you want to stay near the MRT, but you do not want to stay next to MRT track. That is so absolutely that, right. Yeah, mm. it gives no noise issues. At the same time, you enjoy the convenience I would say that's wonderful because it will affect resellability if your MRT track is giving you noise every two minutes. Yeah. So I uh, don't see any questions. If you have any questions, please feel free to type in. If not, then we will end the session in like two minutes. Anyone has any questions for us? Any question for Mr. Raymond uh, on top of his view on the inflation? Oh yeah, Mr. Raymond, maybe maybe just a point to note. You say that in, in Singapore, the inflation is only about uh, less than 10%. Uh, 7%. End of, yeah, end of the day, if you go to a coffee shop to buy coffee, you can tell that the coffee price uh, is getting more and more expensive. Is this also inflation? In a way, you are right. <laughs> yeah, yes. I, I I remember, I remember just uh, before Chinese New Year, a bowl of noodle in my place cost three fifty. Now it as it is at least four fifty. Yeah, you know, uh, I heard one economist or analyst says he says inflation goes up like a rocket, but comes down like a feather. So, <laughs> so really, we have to manage our costs, and one way to really make your an asset or rather your value of your heart and money stays stronger is invest in property because truly it has been a proven asset over time. Mm. Okay. I think we have a question. I think I have a question in the chat room. Uh, when, when will we know the actual price for Lantor Modern? Okay, in actual fact, that is a very good question. Okay. As of now, okay, the developer would not give you the actual selling price of Lantor Modern first because as of now, it is not available for sale. What you can do as a potential buyer is to give a so-called an EOI, an expression of interest to your agent to tell them that, hey, I'm interested to make a purchase. That means to say that I'm, if let's say, for example, if the purchase price is really at maybe thousand eight, thousand nine, or close to $2,000, I feel that this is something which I can afford then I can go ahead with a purchase. If not, I can actually pull back, I can don't buy. Okay, so as of now, 
if you want to know the price, the actual price of land tall modern, right? Please go ahead and submit the expression of interest uh, through your agents. He can help you manage with the ex submission of the expression of interest. This will allow you a golden ticket. Okay, this is like a balloting ticket. With the balloting ticket, during balloting day, you can actually know what exactly is the price. Yeah, because we are expecting very strong demand that a lot of buyers will turn up and we don't want uh, to have a situation where you have to queue overnight to mm. get your unit. So that's why we have to collect interest and there'll be balloting done so that it's a, a fair and orderly mm -hmm. manner that you, you go by your balloting number and get the unit you want. At the day of booking, you look at the price, you like it, you go ahead with the purchase. So you have nothing to lose. If you put in an expression of interest, it won't cost you a single cent. And definitely, it will give you a chance if you are one of the first buyers. You know, I, I have a friend who was so lucky. He was number one pick at many years ago, High Park Residences, if you remember, one of the mm -hmm. mega launch. He was number one and he go in, uh, he was stunned. He don't know which one to pick first because the whole condo is for him to pick. Too, too many choices. Too many choices. You don't which one to buy. So sometimes... Uh, that is a good problem. You are number one. You also... Wow. Then everybody was clapping, you know, celebrating for him that he's number one. Yeah. But it was like shock. Oh yeah, by the way, by the way, man, you remind me of something. So for those potential buyers, okay, which you are maybe buying together with your immediate family members, you may have a chance to so-called skip queue. We can place you, just try to speak to an RHT agent. We will be able to put you into a priority queue. So yeah. you have selection way before the rest of the people. This is called bulk purchaser. Yes. Mm. Uh, make sure that both of you are interested. Cannot yes. be on the booking day, only one person go uh, ahead and the other person don't want to go ahead. Because if the other person go not go ahead, developer won't allow you to book, but put you back into the normal queue. Normal queue. Yep. Yeah. That's so right. do take note of that as well, because we don't want everybody to start thinking of ways to jump queue, right? Yep. Yep. But definitely it's a wonderful project and we believe the demand will be very strong and definitely wish all of you uh, good luck to get your choice you need if you choose to go ahead with Lantern Modern. I think a word from the ground is that because us in the real estate industry, a lot of real estate agents, according to them, they are also potential buyers. Just like one, one of the uh, petrol company says, we are drivers too. In the real estate company, we are owners too. We want to buy something that is good for us, maybe good for our children. I think this also will gather a lot of uh, interest for agents to make a purchase as well. Yeah, I agree with you because Guaco has been known to always produce outstanding products mm -hmm. and always their projects hold value over time. Definitely, I believe the intrinsic value is always there. So I think enough of our chit-chatting. <laughs> Not much question. Uh, we shall end this session. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us tonight. I hope that to see you at the show flat on Friday onwards. We see you at Langtor Modern Show Flat. Thank you so much. See you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.